Hey guys, Brian Goes Blue. And Coco too. Back again with another movie trip to Vlog for you tonight. And tonight, we're going to be seeing The Holdovers. Yeah. One I've been really looking forward to, directed by Alexander Payne, um, starring the great Paul Giamatti. Um, I don't know, probably under, underrated, like one of my favorite, like, actors you know was my one of my favorite actors yeah um what y'all know about the holdovers did yeah. you guys even know this was coming out i feel like it's well we don't watch a lot of cable but we did see a trailer for it a couple times mm -hmm. but i don't feel like i've been hearing much about it in the community yeah unless i just honestly i haven't really ugh, life anyways i haven't really been following too much of what everybody's buzzing about but i was before and i didn't really hear much about it so yeah i don't know so I know he is the. It takes place in the seventies, I believe, and mm -hmm. it's really got a, a straight up seventies feel to it. Yeah. Um, and definitely Christmas vibes. Yeah, um, good holiday vibes here. I heard that the director Alexander Payne, um, who's probably one of my favorite directors, I love all his movies that I've seen, um, Sideways, About Schmidt, um, Election, Descendants. Mm -hmm. um, but um, anyways, I heard that he didn't like the feedback that he's been getting from uh, critics and audiences because uh, they're saying it has a warm and cozy Christmas feel and he didn't like that for some reason. I'm oh, not sure why. I did um, see that too. So that's interesting. But that is interesting. But if, if people like your movie and they want to put a, put a little label on it like that, I don't see what the harm is. Right. Um, yeah. Basically, I think he's, I think um, Paul G. Mighty's character is a, like a principal or, mm -hmm. or the head of the school and um, uh, these these students um, they can't go home for the holidays or whatever so I guess he stays there and uh, kind of watches over the kids and then there's the other lady too yeah and they're like kind of like this little family they end up having like a dinner remember the the lady she's yeah. like talking to him and kind of like motherly to him yeah she's like the lunch lady I believe yeah and something have something going on with her son mm -hmm. and uh, I guess out um, Paul Giamatti he uh, friends one of the kids and they, they have like a good strong strong bond between them so mm -hmm. it's definitely gonna be heartfelt heartfelt it's gonna be heartfelt yeah, be heart and probably like a little tearjerker yeah definitely tearjerker not probably yeah definitely so. but uh you know what we we need we need to turn off our brains tonight definitely and just have a relaxing evening and enjoy watching a movie because this is what we love to do and this is how we unwind yeah and lord knows we need to so <laughs> it's 11 30 or yeah it's not it's 9 35 we're gonna get in there the movie starts now we've already you know we've already got all our stuff we just we gotta go stuff. get refills we gotta get it so we're gonna go do that and then we'll see you guys with puffy red crying faces in yeah, i'll try to hold it back for you a couple hours <laughs> we'll try to hold it back in <laughs> fact through the trees to amc's here we go and my app does not go. Oh no, it's spinning. It always does that. Oh, there we go. Killers of the Flower Moon. No, that was last time. <laughs> so yeah, the holdovers. I didn't even know this was uh, being made up until like a month or two ago. So I'm just looking forward to a new, a new Alexander Payne film. And it's going to be good. I think it's Coco's first one. Really? From this director, yeah. I don't know. But you've seen with me anyways. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna head on in there. Alright, we just got out of seeing the holdovers. I think both of us know that it was a very great movie. We'll talk about it more in the car. And we're back in the car. Yes, we okay. are. So, yeah, the holdovers. Woo! You like that? That was so good. Yeah, it was really good. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was really good. I, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it right off the bat. Oh, sorry, I'm a little sick. <laughs> I'm having a little trouble breathing. Um, but I, I think that that I can see that being a staple, a holiday staple, for years and years to come, for us. So. Yeah. Like a, a staple watch around this time mm -hmm. of year. Yeah. Maybe more in like December. We kind of start our watches early, like in November. But yeah. I feel like it would be even better closer to Christmas. Yeah, they put a lot of uh, these Christmas type of movies uh out in november mm -hmm. before so. so it really takes place like very close to christmas like a few days before mm -hmm. and then after christmas and right up until new year's yeah. new year's day so yeah yeah i i'm i give it a five out of five yeah yeah wow. i really liked it a lot 
I'll probably give it a five too. Yeah. I was thinking four point five or two five, something like that. This movie, um, man, it really like I was I was with the characters, like feeling for them, feeling with them, like all throughout. Mm -hmm. It like pulled at my heart. It made me feel heavy at times. It was a little dark at times, a little maybe like one could say depressing and dark, but if you can connect with that, it, it's really touching. Mm -hmm. It's it's very like you have to have a be in a very I, I don't want to say a specific mood to see this because I wasn't in any kind of like particular mood. I just wanted to relax and watch a movie, but maybe one person would come see this and go, oh, this wasn't like a cheery enjoyable Christmas movie but I think for us like I know how we are and like yeah. this is a very good like holiday movie for us anyway I yeah. don't know I don't know if I explained that well but I want to know your thoughts about it well it's a bit definitely a character driven movie it's not like all in your face holiday this is that that's true there are some yeah. holiday a lot of holiday songs in here oh with, yeah you know and uh, for anybody to say that's not holiday related or Christmas themed at all then that's that's totally wrong but um the the whole basis of the movie was yeah um I guess um Paul is a played by um Paul Giamatti Paul Giamatti mm -hmm. the name of the movie is Paul right yeah Paul Hunnam yeah Paul Hunnam mm -hmm. and uh he's he's a teacher at this academy mm -hmm. and um you know I guess the kids that don't have families to go home to for Christmas or can't go home for Christmas mm -hmm. from the academy are what they call the holdovers. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's got to be somebody to watch them uh, over the season. And uh, a lot of the people just make, a lot of the other teachers make enough excuses why they can't do it. And so uh, ends up being Paul's turn to um, to watch them. Yeah, because he, we come to find out he doesn't really have anything else to do or anyone else to be with, mm -hmm. which ends up being pretty heartwarming in and of itself yeah so anyway and then in comes in mary who she was also the um the, the cafeteria, the cafeteria manager. manager school yeah. cook mm -hmm. um but she doesn't have anywhere to go either yeah and she lives pretty much right near campus or on campus yeah um, we find that she experienced a loss as well so yeah. it's like a heavy time for her a heavy time of year for her as well yeah, she lost her son at age 19 mm -hmm. from uh, some tragedy and war yep um and her husband was lost years ago before her, husband, her son was even born mm -hmm. while she was pregnant with him. So yep. there's that. So, you know, a um, couple of people that don't have a lot of, uh, much family mm -hmm. in there. And then um, so it ends up being all these kids. Like there's like there's five of them total. Five of them total, pulled yeah. Pulled overs. But then those kids end up being able to go home eventually to their families and then they're kind of just left with Angus. No, no, no. They went on a, they went on a field trip. Oh, they, they went did? on a ski trip with oh. the one boy's dad. Duh. Yeah. So like they were, it was kind of funny because like the, it was like kind of, kind of college feel like dorm room, like how they were like in the nineties movies, how they'd all, there was this long hallway and everybody's giving each other shit across the hall. And mm -hmm. it was kind of like l fun and lighthearted then, but like the boys were clashing and giving each other shit. And then like, yeah, you know, then they're all held over and we see some relationships built there mm -hmm. and they're kind of supporting each other and building each other up, but also yeah. kind of still butting heads. And then like, boom, all of a sudden one of the boys' fathers comes in on the hel in the helicopter and says like, okay, we're going on the ski trip and they all can go, but Angus can't because his mom recently, well, got married like earlier in the year, but like back in the summer, yeah. but is just now taking a honeymoon and dropped it on Angus that she's not coming to pick him up for Christmas for, for the holiday. So anyway, they, they couldn't get a hold of his mom because she was on her freaking honeymoon and to get permission to right? get permission yeah. to go on the ski trip. So then we're left with Paul, Mary and Angus, just them for the whole, for the whole holiday, for the whole remainder of the film, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, they end up forming bonds and relationships, all three of them together. Uh, it's really heartwarming, and um, you know, to get to know one each other a little bit better, and especially with uh, the teacher and student relationship. Yeah. Um, you get that aspect of uh, him understanding the teacher and where he's coming from more. Yes. And uh, everybody, all the other kids think he's a total asshole, and he just gives them bad grades for the hell of it. But it, that's not the case. And they open each other's eyes up about each other like a lot. All three yep. of them, they but mainly the two, the Paul and, and Angus. 
Yeah. Um, they they go. It's not all just in the school too. I thought that would happen, but a, a field trip happens, and they go somewhere else, which is really they go on their own little field trip, and we learn some more. We discover some more about Angus's past, and um, it's just really it's really deep. And it's if you've ever experienced basically anything in your life, you know, the, things happen, and this time of year is cheery and bright, but it, it touches on what. The, the personal struggles that everybody has in their life you know and some people have it a little harder than others and so it's a good time of year to just reflect and I'm, I'm on a little soapbox I guess it just to be kind to everyone because you don't know what people are going through you you may think you know especially if somebody's a hard ass and you just think oh that guy's an asshole or that woman's a bitch yeah you don't know what they're going through so just especially this time of year just be kind and just know that everybody's got something going on and just your smile or your words of encouragement or just not being a jerk you know yeah. could make all the difference so you know another story <laughs> kind of what, what that's kind of the message that i take from this a yeah. big one and, and, uh, and what i always try to keep in mind this time of year and always but they call a uh, fall uh walleye because if this Oh. Has one wonky eye. You know what's what's crazy about it is yeah. I noticed like I was watching the eye like because I was like how did they yeah. do this? You're like a contact. It it switched off. There must mm -hmm. be some behind the scenes thing where he, he maybe he talks about it. Maybe we'll discover it someday, or maybe someday we'll be lucky enough to ask him ourselves. Um, it did switch off. It switched I, eyes. It did. That's funny. He must not have been comfortable wearing it for a long period of time, or didn't, they didn't think somebody would notice. I definitely noticed it. It did switch off. So, yeah, yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> but, um... That was funny. Yeah, there were so many... Fun, and it wasn't just dark and, and, like, depressing and, like, you know... Oh, yeah. It was funny. There were so many funny things that happened. It, I mean, the whole theater, I mean, there wasn't a lot of us in there. But everybody was laughing, I feel like. And mm -hmm. we just really all had fun together watching it. It was, yeah. like, a whole experience. Yeah, the dry sense of humor from Paul Giamatti. Great. Mm -hmm. Um... The whole thing. Yeah, it was just so good. The music, the score of it was great. And as soon as as soon as the previews ended and the movie popped on screen, literally you could hear the pops. And it was like seeing a movie in the seventies, which obviously we never did because we weren't born. Yeah. But I can imagine that what it, that's what it would have been like. It felt so genuine. It was. I mean, it was a timepiece because it, it was mm -hmm. seventy. I think they went into seventy one. When they saw, so it was in it was between seventy and seventy one that this took place. Yeah, it started off they they purposely did the little pops in the film, mm -hmm. um, you know, to start it off and and it looked like old school, like an old school film, part of the intro. Of it. Yeah, and uh, I mean it cleared up once it got into the movie part, but it, there definitely was like a haze on the camera when mm -hmm. they filmed it to make it look like that seventies aspect. Yes, which is really cool, and it actually made it made the film feel more warm too. It did, and speaking of contrast of warm, it was actually freezing cold because genuinely it was snowing, and you could see their breath when they were outside. Like it was filmed during that time of year. I mean, unless they were just so brilliant that they were on a sound stage that was like looked so much outside and fake snow, but I don't think so. I think it was really they were outdoors. Yeah. Before I forget, I want to talk about um, Angus's character, um, the actor Dominic Sessa. I just looked his name up. You said this was his like acting debut. I think it's his first role. Yeah. He did amazing. He was just so good, like mm -hmm. really won me over. It was just so so good. Yeah. Like I I was like kept thinking in the back of my head like okay he's a new actor, you know there's gonna be something, but there really wasn't. Like every emotion whether it was funny or serious or snarky or um upset or or hysterical like he just like he just hit all those marks i think he did a really fantastic job yeah he did i mean the other boys were great too in their roles but like he just really stole the show <laughs> and i'm sure that's why they cast him for that role because he was a lead character in the story so they found a good one with him mm -hmm. i i was trying to think of all all of what i've seen paul giamatti and i'm sure there's more than i can even think of but i i think i think of uh I can't even think of the name. Not blank check. What was it? The one where he jumps in the swimming pool and he turns blue. A big fat liar. Big fat liar. Yeah, like when I think of him, I always think of that movie. Yeah, that's funny. From childhood. Um, this is a lot younger than. This rolls right up there with um, um, Sideways, which is also directed by Alexander Payne. 
mm. with him and Thomas Hayden Church. It's a great one. Okay. And then um, another one I like a lot called American Splendor. That's only on DVD, but that's a really good Paul Giamatti flick as mm. well. Um, but yeah, those two are my favorite besides this one. That's Paul Giamatti. There definitely were some crying moments. Definitely uh, at least a couple that I can count. And, you know, that was, that's always... It, you know, yeah, I don't want to say, oh, it's great, it feels great to cry, but to like be so touched that you're, be so moved that you have like an emotional yeah. response and cry, and you connect with the movie so much, like that's really special. Oh yeah. So, can you see this being something that we not only own on physical media but watch like around the holidays? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like one of our staples. Definitely. It's it's just so good. It is great. So I'm really glad we came out to see it. Me too. And I urge everybody to go see it before yes. it comes out of theaters because Definitely. there's a lot out this month. And hey, that was my niece. Was it really? No. What the heck? Yeah, sorry. The, my niece, Brittany, that's always in the videos. <laughs> oh my God, sorry. Okay, yeah. I, I just wanted to tell her that we saw her. You've seen her in our videos. That's so crazy. She just like left the theater. It's like 1230. That's, that's nuts. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. I cut you off. But yeah, um, <laughs> where was I, what was I, don't I saying? I know! What was he saying? I'm sorry, I totally cut you off. Oh, shit. <laughs> sorry about that. I don't know. Uh, yeah, this could definitely be a Christmas staple for mm -hmm. us. Um, I'm definitely going to be picking this one up. Um, yeah, I don't know where, where I'm I was. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Should we pause it and get, get your thoughts together? No. I really don't. And we're going to look back and you're going to be like, oh, because usually, you know, when you have that like moment and you're like, oh yeah, I don't remember what I was going to say. And then you'll be able to watch the video back. We can literally pause this and you can go back five seconds and look and know what you were talking about. Because I feel so I'm, bad. I'm the Xteras are so rare though. Like you don't just see one of those. So I knew, I knew that was her. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's pause it. We never do that. All we right, have to. One second. All right.